if you were to visit Crownsville in the 1920s or 30s, you would have found an institution that was wildly overcrowded, at times people sleeping two to a bed, head to foot, children sleeping in overcrowded wards and open rooms with adult males, uh, people forced to sleep on wooden benches and out on porches, uh, patients forced to work out in the fields, you know, from a distance from the street, it, it would look to you like a farm colony, not, not really like a hospital. And then for the patients who were physically or mentally unable to work, they were often left in these very cramped, um, barren rooms without much to do. There, there really wasn't much in the way of recreation until the 50s and 60s when uh, a couple black families arrived and decided to create a recreation department all on their own. So it, it is this very, um, it, it was a place of extremes, both physical extremes in, in terms of the labor and the output um, and temperature. In some of the records, you hear that in the summer, it's swelter there's a sweltering heat in the buildings. In the winter, patients are freezing to death at times and they simply can't find enough clothing and, and, and blankets to support them all. Um, you know, there are children who were there for decades without any kind of schooling provided to them whatsoever. Um, and so, you know, as you said, to not linger there too long, because of course the institution improves as time goes on. Um, you know, this is a place where people could, people could be lost to Crownsville. Um, and it could look quiet and beautiful from a distance and from the outside. But that, um, that rural beauty behind all of that was something much darker. And in a way, that outer shell is what allows for the abuse to go on for so long. Um, that and, of course, just the inability for Black patients to have their voices heard, to get reporters to take them seriously. You know, it's, it's really organizations like the NAACP, which is an organization for the advancement of, of Black Americans and, and their civil rights in the United States. Um, it is some individual Black reporters who themselves get on the phone and, and fight with state leaders to try to push for integration who start to make the change. You know, it is, it is not famous papers like the Washington Post and the Baltimore Sun that really got in there and started to tell Black patients stories. Um, and so for decades, this was a place where patients were more likely to die than to get out and more likely to be lost than to recover.